Hello again, good morning again, and welcome to Treasures from Heaven. I would like to host your mute someone, I mean, anybody with a show of hands to give us the opening prayer for Treasures from Heaven. Please host, allow anybody that shows their his or hands up to give us the opening prayer for Treasures from Heaven. Thank you. Okay, nobody's nobody's showing their hands. Okay, Pastor Balade, please. Host, please omit Pastor Balade to give us the open prayer. Father, we thank you, Shepherd. It's your holy name. Thank you, o Lord, for the opportunity to gather at your feet this morning. Holy Spirit, you are the best teacher. Even as we have gathered this morning, we come with expectation to learn at your feet. We ask, Lord, that even as we go into the review season, for that you have helped us to be able to attend treasures from heaven, that Holy Spirit, you will teach us yourself. You will speak through, O oh Lord, the facilitator. You will give our common insights. All my team, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Um, host and co-host, please. I would like you to, um, sister and um, Pastor Pei will also like to um chip in a few things. So when she shows by uh, raising up her hand, please help her mute or mute her so that um it can be a seamless service. Praise the Lord. So yeah, welcome once again to uh, Treasures to Treasures from Heaven, uh, Sunday School, our uh, online, I mean, uh, in person, our uh, online Sunday School for Desire of Nations. So we're having a review for the first quarter of 2024, that is from January to, uh, supposed to be from January to March, but of course we had headed it to April because of some circumstances beyond our control. So. This quarter, we just we can't take all this. Of course, we can't take all the topics, but we'll just be taking a few topics and then um, we'll be discussing. I'll be, I'll be asking questions. If it's an interactive session, I'll be asking questions. We'll be answering to just to help us to know that we, we have indeed learned. And you're taking we are taking home one or two things on, on what we have learned throughout this quarter. So we we had. The topic of vengeance taken by Pastor K. Agbabiaka. He took us on the topic of vengeance. Those are the things that we're going to be discussing today. Just a few topics from all the topics that we have learned this week, that we have um, been taught this uh, quarter. So we have patience as well. That is from Pastor Pius. Pastor Pius took us through the topic of patience. Stop the excuses, Sister Mobi took us through that. Arise, shine, one and two. I think I took us through that as well. Then hospitality by Sister Jade. Then infant Christians, Sister Ife Bamidili, and facing life with courage, one and two. Those were the two last ones where we did and was taken by Brother Toby Amau. So we'll start in earnest, our time is fast spent. We'll go on endlessly. So we start with vengeance taken by Pastor K. So this time around, please um, indicate with a show of hands because we're going to be asking lots of questions. We're going to be interactive as we usually do when we are in person in church because this is a review. It's not just the host or the facilitator. Sorry, it's not just the facilitator. Just ranting, <laughs> rattling away. It's going to be very, very interactive as we usually do. So the topic of vengeance, if you remember. So what is vengeance? What did we say vengeance was? Please host when... Anybody raises up their hand, please try and meet them so that they can contribute. Thank you. What did you say vengeance was? What did we say vengeance was? We talked about it. Pastor K gave us the, he, he was one that taught us that topic. What did we say vengeance was? I will not move forward until we say what vengeance is because I hope you have been doing good listening as we tell our children. 
what is vengeance? What is vengeance? Pastor K, please don't answer. You did taught us this topic, so I expect you to know this very well. Every other person, any other person can answer. What is, or should I just pick somebody randomly? What is vengeance? Ah, we are all in touch that time now. What did you say vengeance was? Okay, Sister Ariana, please. Post or meet Sister Ariana and let her tell us what vengeance is. I believe vengeance is taking matters into your own hand um, when trying to receive um, retribution of some kind. And I, I remember us talking about, um, it was something that um, in addition to what we learned from Treasures from Heaven, um, I think Pastor Tenney was teaching us in Word Cafe about how we don't quite know the exactitude or the amount of vengeance that should be taken. So that's why we should commit it to the Lord because the Bible says that vengeance is his. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Ariana. So but, uh, Pastor Baladi put here in the chat box, it says vengeance is retaliating for wrong done to us. That's exactly. You are rendering evil for evil. You retaliate for the wrong that was done to us. That is what vengeance is. And we outlined the causes of vengeance as um, the failure to forgive. We want to avenge the wrong, like the brother has just said, and not letting go of the past. You are still thinking about it. You haven't forgotten. You haven't still, it's still in your mind to retaliate when you are given the chance. So those are the causes of vengeance. Of course, that is not all. We can still have more causes of vengeance, but of course, we just outlined those three as causes of vengeance. And said so that God does not want us to avenge ourselves. I should leave it for God. Yes, in Romans chapter 12, I think the later part, that vengeance is of the Lord, that I should leave it for him. And um, God is a better judge. That God is a better judge for us. You cannot even retaliate as best as God would have done. If you try to do it ourselves, you know, God knows how to serve the vengeance very sweetly. So he does it even more we can even think or even imagine. So we shall carry the vengeance for God. So and we should also pray for the spirit of forgiveness. We should pray for the spirit of forgiveness that we should not avenge. Then it's God command that we should not. In first in first Peter 3:19. First Peter 3.19, I think I will just quickly read that. What does this say about vengeance? First Peter 3.19. First Peter 3.19. Uh, it says, um, oh, yes. This is Second Peter. Sorry, I was I was supposed to read First Peter 3. 19 and it says I'm coming let me read in um it's God command yes I'm so sorry my my Bible can somebody please read it my Bible is acting up it's not coming up maybe it's the internet I don't know first Peter 3 19 says so he went and preached this to the spirits in prison. No, 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 sorry. Three nine. Three nine. Sorry. Okay. Three nine. Sorry. First Peter three nine. First Peter three nine. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. This is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. Praise God. Thank you very much, Sister Mobi. So you can see that it's God's command that we should not repay evil for evil. We should not retaliate. We should not take vengeance into our hands. You know, I remember that Pastor K really, really talked on this, that we should let go and let God. I think those were his words, that we should let go and let God do it for us, if I remember very, uh, if I remember very well. So, God, like I said, God's vengeance is much more than yours. It makes you a better person. If you do not revenge, it makes you a better person. 
you know, people of the world might think, ah, look at you, why are you so stupid? You're not even retaliating. You're not trying to get the person back. But as God has commanded us, we should not do it and make us a better person. And by then, we can even change others. By then, we can change others. When people look at you, they will go, ah, this person, even in the face of this, she didn't retaliate, she didn't retaliate, he was a better person for this. People might want, even want to like, okay, well, I want to know what is in you that's not making you to retaliate. And by then, we are drawing more people to God. We tell them it's God that is doing it. And then by then, somebody might say, okay, I want to know this, your God. You have won his soul for God. So we should not... Um, we should not revenge, we should not take vengeance into our hands. So I want uh, the take home from this lesson. I want somebody to tell us what the, he or she took home from this lesson of vengeance that Brother K took us through. Pastor K took us through in, uh, I think it was in January or February. Vengeance, I'll take home from this. What did you take home from the lesson of vengeance? Yes, please, throw your hands. Let us hear. What did we take home from the lesson of vengeance? Yes, Sister Rihanna. <clears throat> I would say, like we read in the scripture, um, the take home should be, bless those who curse you, um, ask and pray and ask the Lord to help you to forgive, and also... Give all things to the Lord, for he knows exactly how much vengeance to exact. Don't take matter on him. Thank you. Also, um, Pastor Bumi and Pastor Shola, I don't know who wants to talk at all. So, so well, your hands is raised. Up. Yes, please. Who so meet past the pastors, please. Yes. Uh, good morning. I what think for that? me, I think Pastor Kyle there had said, um, venge vengeance is that person's going low. For you, is you going lower? You know, I think that was his, uh, that was what Pastor K had said. And Jesus said, when they slap you on the right, you turn left. You don't, you know, you don't. <laughs> I know it's hard, right? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we are Christians. These things are, these things are, um, mm -hmm. what we do by faith. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I, on I'm not saying you should subject yourself to that, but uh, use wisdom. Use mm. wisdom. You mm. don't pay an eye for an eye. Moses has said, but that 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 that's not what um it, it, Jesus Jesus turned that around. and said, these things you did because of the hardness of your own heart. So now we know better. We know mm. better than um, so. In, if wisdom is profitable. So if somebody because some people are just uh, when some people they take advantage of people when they see that you are not really. Uh, you are not vengeful and you are just taking it, sucking it in. It, it brings bitterness for that person, you know, for you because you don't want to do nothing at the same time. This person is, keeps, they, 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 they taking you advantage, they're taking advantage of you, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So wisdom is profitable. Don't subject yourself to that, you know, pray to God and um, maybe move away from that person. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Pastor Shola. And Pastor Shubala also put on the chat box, he said, let's go and let's go. Like you have said earlier on, let's go and let's go. Praise the Lord. And then um, just to on the on the lighter boat, um, and when Moses said an eye for an eye, you leave everybody blind. So after a while, there won't be any sightseeing persons, you know. When there, there's no how we haven't wrong, but somebody hasn't wrong. So if we go and eye for an eye all the time, who will be left to see? Nobody. So thank you very much, Pastor, Pastor Shola, for that. And thank you very much, Pastor K, for taking, through, for taking us through that lesson of vengeance earlier on in the year. So the second um, topic we're going to be reviewing is um, patience by Pastor Pius. Pastor Pius actually took us on the topic of patience, and it was from Psalm 37, verse 7 to 9. Please, can we read that, please? Psalm 37, verse 7 to 9. Psalm 37, 7 to 9. Psalm 37, 7 to 9. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. 
Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Esther Mobi. So that talks about patience. Patience is a virtue. It's a virtue. It's one of the um, fruit of the spirits. And we are all enjoined to be patient in all things. In all things, we should be patient. We are loved and encouraged to be patient. And Bible, we just read from the um, passage that Sister Mobi read, 37 to, um, Psalm 37, 7 to 9, that we should stop being angry, turn from your rage. We should not lose our temper. It leads to harm. You know, when somebody, impatience leads to so many things. You can see even impatient drivers, when you see them, when they, when they pass by you very quickly and try to cut corners and all that. At times, I'm, I'm surprised I've seen a very impatient driver that just drove past us and, I mean, was really very impatient and very fast and all that. And when you get further up, that's probably he's, he's had an accident or something has happened to him. I'm sure we have all seen things like that. So we should, learn, we should all learn to be patient. Like um, Pastor Pius told us the other time, we talked about, I talked about patience. That is a virtue. Then how do we exercise patience? We have said it. You should rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for God to act. Rest in him, you know. Waiting patiently on him at every point in time. That is what um, we should do. Then what does patience produce? It produces perseverance and character. It produces perseverance and character. It makes you that when, when you are in, when you are, when when you have learned or you are in the process of God and God teaching you patience and all that. So many things will come to test your patience, but because you are you are you are you are learning from God, you are learning to wait patiently on Him. You are learning to be patient. You will learn to curb yourself. You will learn to bridle your tongue. You will learn to curb your excesses. You know so many things that you do when that that patience can do for us. So patience produces perseverance and character. Isn't it? That's in James 1, 2 to 4. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. James 1, 2 to 4. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a, great, has a chance to grow. So let it grow. When, when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So once we, we learn the art of patience, it produces perseverance and character. Bible says that we'll be perfect, complete, and needing nothing. We need patience when we are waiting upon the Lord. If you were in um, what I mean, um, uh, Workers meeting this morning talked about patience. While you are waiting for the Lord, you have to be patient. You cannot twist and um, twist God and say, God, no, 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 I want it. No, 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 no. At God's perfect timing, He will do it for us. So you need patience when you are waiting for. And I think we talked about it the last about two or three Sundays ago. When we are waiting for, when, when we are, yes, I think Sister Nick to through that. We need patience when you are waiting upon the Lord. When you are waiting upon the Lord, do other things as well. You can. There's some so many things I can be doing while waiting for the Lord. When you are still persisting in prayer, when you are still waiting for God to answer your prayer, there are other things that you can do. So at this juncture, we are going to be raising our hands to tell us, and people are going to be asking, I mean, we are going to be asking questions. Let's mention Bible characters that demonstrated lack of patience and what happens to them. So let's just all think and think of um, Bible characters. Sister Ifeba Midele, you are going to tell us one. Bible character that demonstrated lack of patience and what happens to him or her? A Bible character. Yeah, I think King Saul is a good example and um, he was impatient and uh, that led to him losing his kingdom. So I think sometimes we might, uh, if you look at it on the face value, what he wanted to do was a good thing but it was not his place to do it. And he was impatient to wait for the person authorized to do it. And he got into lifetime trouble. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. That was a very, very good example. So we need one more example just to know that um, people in the Bible also demonstrated lack of patience. And what happened? Okay. Sister, I fed it. Have you thought of one now? 
Um, host, please, can you unmute Sister Ifeba Mdili? Okay. Um, I was thinking maybe Samson. I was thinking Samson because he was, I think impatience was what made him also like, like impatience, lack of self-control was what made him want someone that he shouldn't have wanted. Mm. I believe I really can't think of anyone else. I don't yeah. know. Why. <laughs> you, you, you are right, you're right there. Impatience. God had told them, don't take people from, don't marry from this part. He was impatient. You couldn't have, you should have waited for, somebody within his own people but he didn't wait he was impatient yes pastor shola or pastor Bumi? um yeah i know it doesn't look like it i agree with it and i was going to say abraham too mm -hmm. abraham was impatient because um if they had waited for the promised child you know like what the world is right now what we see happening that won't happen but abraham i know it doesn't look like it like i said but they were uh, they were impatient. Sarah actually gave um a handmaid to 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 Abraham. So they were impatient. They, they, they didn't want to wait for the child. It was taking too long. So mm -hmm. you know we this these um this is what we demonstrate. These are things that we see even in our in this in our time and age now. Mm -hmm. You know we are impatient. We want to mm -hmm. want to cut corners. We want to we want to do it our own way. Maybe I didn't hear right. Maybe God did not see. Maybe it wasn't a prophecy. Maybe the God you know we just. Try to bubble things up and just um, just justify that action. I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've been waiting for that. I'm now 30. I'm now 35. Maybe that brother that came earlier. So a, a lot of examples, you know. So you know. Exactly, exactly. Thank you very much, Pastor Shola. So Pastor Kate, just buttress your point again. He said, Abraham and Sarah. Sarah, most especially, he said. He said, she pressured Abraham to sleep with Eger to have his son. And we all know what it is. And somebody, and this our mission said, microwave generation, fast, fast, fast. We need things to be done fast, 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 you know. We don't wait for anything. Stockman and Pastor Kme said King Saul, yeah, like um Pastor Baladi has mentioned. Then Sister Titi said Moses striking the rock when God asked him to speak to it, exactly. And of course, we know the consequences. He didn't get to see the promised land. He didn't get to, he saw it at Apa, but he didn't get to go there, you know. And that was, I'm sure that really, really, really hurt him. You know, thank God for Jesus' mercy at, this, at, at the at transfiguration that he was able to step into the promised land. I mean, at transfiguration, but that's a story for another day. So thank you very much. So then the last thing I have here is what makes patience an important Christian virtue? I mean, what makes patience an important? Because I felt the topic of patience was really something that um, we all needed. And we all need to really, really, really go into it. So another question is, what makes patience an important Christian virtue? Like you said, patience is a virtue, is a fruit of the spirit. So what really makes it very important? Yes. Sister Kwe said, um, waiting makes patience. We have to wait on God. Waiting makes patience, OK? Um, so Daniel said, because it shows our trust and faith in God, exactly. It shows that we trust God completely. So we can wait for God at, till any, if God says, till the kingdom come, yes, we wait till the kingdom come. He says, till 20 years, we wait. that is where it just shows that God's timing is the best. We wait for God's time. Yes, sister, Pastor Nika said, waiting for God's timing. Yes, he makes all things beautiful in his time. Exactly. If we are in them. Um, Treasures from heaven, I mean, from Sunday school today, we talked about that. God makes things beautiful in his own time. Praise the Lord. So we'll move on to Sister Moby. Stop the excuses. Stop the excuses. So what are excuses? Yeah, but Anakati said, sorry, just before I go on, but Anakati said, um, allow God to build character. and This patience allows God to bring, to build character and resilience in us. Exactly, build character. And then Pastor Shubala also said, everything in life goes through a process for it to be perfected, which is true. We short circuit certain things. God is working out for us by impatience. Exactly, exactly. Like he said, King Saul, it was instead of just waiting for Samuel to come, he felt that he was, Samuel was too late and he did the sacrifice and see where it led him. Praise the Lord. So, um, stop the excuses. That was a topic taken by Sister Moby. And what are the excuses that people give today for not serving God? We talked about uh, service to God. 
when said stop the excuse, people say, ah, I have children, so I can't come to church. My children are three, they are four, they are five. Before I get them ready in the morning, before they wake up and all that, they can't come to church. This, 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 we have excuses. I mean, genuine as it may be, you know, I mean, very genuine excuses. But God said we should stop the excuses in for us not to serve in the um in, in God's house. So we are asking a question. We said, what are the excuses that people give today for not serving God? People give excuses for not serving God. So what are they? Yes, inconvenience. Yes, somebody said inconvenience. Inconvenience as how, like I just said, it's not convenient for me to bring my five children to church because I can't wake up early to get them to church. Yeah, jobs, exactly. Work schedules, exactly. Businesses, yes, my business is in Korea. So I have to go to Korea to bear in mind it. Living... God's work unattended. Yes, stress. Yes. Like I said, genuine, very genuine excuses. So I'm not saying they are not genuine. Very genuine excuses. But of course, yes. Uh, I think somebody just put something out here now. It says, yeah, okay, stress. Stress is the last one. So, but the truth is that God has provided an evidence for people to serve him in spirit and in truth. But there are several excuses people give for their failure to accept Jesus Christ or to live a holy life. Some can say, I don't want to come to, not monetary price. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe Sita and I will tell us more about that when I tell, when I give the go ahead sign for the line to be opened. So it says, God has provided an evidence for people to serve him in spirit and in truth, but there are several things people give for their failure to accept Jesus Christ or live a holy life. Exactly, so many excuses. Genuine as it may be, like I said before, so many excuses that people give. It's not yet time. Is is this or that and all that? But I mean, you shouldn't do that. There was a shorter route to the promised land, but God took the children of Israel to the Red Sea. When they passed through the Red Sea. Of course, they met bitter waters, Mara waters, those bitter waters, and all, all sorts of things. Of course, the Americans too were there disturbing them. So many things were disturbed. They didn't have water to drink. They didn't have food. They were thinking of the leeks and the onions and the garlics that they left in Egypt. You know, so many things. But no one really serves God from the comfort zone. No one really. We always, they, we always, we always leave one thing or the other for something. No one, no one, no, no one likes to wake up very early on Sunday morning because Monday to Friday you are up and some people work Saturdays. You are up very early to go to work. Then you feel Sunday is the day to rest. Yeah, you have to get to church as well. You know, you wake up early. As early as you wake up, maybe you're going to work as well to go to church. So there's, there's really, really, really um, no comfort zone in serving God. But even when we serve God, God sees, God hears, God knows, you know, and he will reward us accordingly. He has said it, he will reward us accordingly. So we should, uh, me inclusive, and I'm sure it uh, pertains to, applies to people here, you know. So we should all stop the excuses. We, we, Jesus could have said, I don't want to die for these people. They are bad people. They are stiff-necked people. They are this, they are that. And of course, it's very genuine. It's, they are genuine excuses as well. But um, like we said, we should stop the excuses. Praise the Lord. So we go to infant Christian sister Omar, sister Ife B. She took us through this infant Christians. As human beings, we need to grow physically, mentally, spiritually, etc. We need to grow all around. As we're growing physically, we must also grow spiritually. First Corinthians 3, 1 to 4 talks on the spiritual growth of Christians. Let's read that. First Corinthians 3, 1 to 4. Sister Mabi, please can you read for us? First, please on me, sister, I'm a bit to read for us. First Corinthians 3, 1 to 4. Yes, please. First yeah. Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to spiritual people. I had to talk as though you belonged to this world or as though you were infants in Christ. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger, and you still aren't ready, for you are still controlled by your sinful nature. You are jealous of one another and quarrel with each other. Doesn't that prove you are controlled by your sinful nature? 
Aren't you living like people of the world? Verse 4, when one of you says, I am a follower of Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, aren't you acting just like people of the world? Thank you very much. So it's just a signs of infancy. I like this person. I don't like this person. I want to follow this person. You know, I don't like, the, I don't want to follow this person. Those there are signs that you see that the, that person, that man or that woman is still an infant in the Lord. And we are, we are encouraged to grow spiritually, just like newborn babies. They are fed with milk. They can't give newborn babies rice to eat or bagel or something to eat, you know. But as the child grows older, it stops, it stops drinking milk, stops, starts taking maybe soft solids, you know. Then from soft solids, it goes to taking solids that are okay. Then, of course, on, before it starts cracking bones and eating tough meat and all that and all that. So that is how we're supposed to go through as Christians. As, as, believe, as young believers, of course, God pardons us and permits us when we do some things we do not know, yeah, he knows that we, do, we are not even going to that maturity yet, so he pardons us, but it's because us to grow daily, every day, grow daily, so that we will know that, okay, these things that we, we because like, like we all know before, we, like we all know, like we all know, children, there's an age of accountability, when you are still young, some things are pardoned, I mean, it's only normal, but once you get to a certain age, you're not pardoned again, you be treated as an adult, so anything that you do wrong as an adult, you, be, you take full responsibility of it as an adult. Like we have children now, they have juvenile, some children have um, uh, juvenile prisons for children to correct them and all that. But I guess once, once they turn 18 or 19, I can't remember, they go into full prisons, full, I mean, prison terms. So you know that they expect them that at that certain age, they expect them to know better, to have grown outgrown all those childish things that they used to do. So also in the things of God. So the signs of infancy, they require attention at all times. They require to be pampered. They are upset easily. Even on trivial issues, they are true believers, but babes in Christ. Yes, they believe God. They, they are true believers, but they are still babes. They, do, they still do things as children. You know, they do not know Christ and the things of God as they should. You know, they are specialists in keeping malice. <laughs> they are hypocrites. They envy and speak evil. They are born again, but not their tongues. They are born again, but not their tongues. They will say, ah, if you had known me when I was back then, eh, hey, you know where you were back then. You know, you're supposed to refight, refight to it again, you know, and all that. I would have killed you. I would have done this. I would have done that. means it's still in their hearts. It's still a little bit in their hearts, you know. So they enjoy creating divisions. They're not prepared to endure hardships. They know more about what it means to pray and to do about the things of God, but they will not. They know it, but they will not because they have not yet gained that maturity. They have not attained that maturity yet. So we are encouraged. We are encouraged not to be infant Christians again as we give our life to Christ, yes, then we continue to grow. And how do we grow? How do we become mature in the things of God? The solutions out of infancy. Please, um, can we show with raise of hands how we can mature out of infancy, solutions out of infancy? Yes, I'm waiting. How do we grow out of infancy? Uh, let me see. Is there anything in the chat box? Okay. Yeah, how do we go out of spiritual infancy? What do we do to become more matured Christians? Instead of being fed milk, milk, milk all the time, how do you do to cracking bones, to taking stuff meat? Yes, Pastor Shola. I mean, just looking at it from the way we from uh, we, uh, the way we raise children. They, you know, they start from drinking milk, and after a while, they start eating solid. So maybe I would say, reading the Bible, studying the Bible, that is our food. You know, that is how we. And I also think there's um, uh, there's um, there's also that deliberate um way as well. Because if you look at the passage that we read, that First Corinthians three, comparing Paul and uh, and Apollo, we should just 
um, know that God has given our leaders different um, talent, different skills, and you are not comparing, and you are not uh, you are being blessed by them because if you look at this, but they you can be blessed by Paul, so by Apostle. So that will add to to your blessing as opposed to just saying, "Oh, I don't even like who's taking workers meeting today." And then you start comparing, oh, compared to last week. So you are not getting blessed. So you have mm -hmm. to be deliberate about it. That I know that you have said that when people are preaching, he writes notes too. You know, so that shows there's that intentionality there that, okay, I have notes, I'll go back to it, I will read as opposed to um, uh, uh, this person that is taking it or this person that's going to anchor it, I'll come after, you know, so that, that's mm -hmm. just my perspective about it. Yes, thank you, May sir. May I also add that... Um, I think also it's the thing of the mind. You need sometimes we when we look at our children, some of them when you're when they are home, they act they act like a baby. But when they see their peers, when they see their friends, when you're taking them to school, they don't act like that. They act like a grown-up. They act like they're an adult. They don't want you to baby baby them outside. But when they home, they want you to fry egg for them. But when they go to school, it's a different story. So I think also it's a mindset. We need to order, also understand that when you get to a particular age, you stop being a baby. You stop mm. being a baby and begin to act like an adult, begin to do mm. things like an adult. So I think also it's our mindset. Yes. Thank you. And um, I think Sister Nike has something here. For it, Okay. Uh, she says James 1 23 to 27 I think I don't know whether it pertains to this or the other one let me see anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and really forgets what it looks like so uh, is it for this or the other one I'm not too sure Please, can you admit Pastor Nikkei before you admit Pastor Shobola? Okay, I'll just leave that. Maybe she's not there. Pastor Shobola, please. Please, admit Pastor Shobola. Let's him. Oh, okay. Just uh, speaking about uh, growing and um, not being babes, uh, one of okay. it yes. is about what we have been taught uh, mm -hmm. in the word as we've come to the church, as we've learned in treasures from heaven, from Bible study, whatever. And I was just giving an example, example of patience yes. and forgiveness that we just learned. Like we need mm -hmm. to take it into practice in our lives, you know, like mm -hmm. what did we learn? Are we doing that? And that is supported by what is said in James 1, 23 to 27 about yeah. After listening to the word, if we go away and we're not practicing it, it's like someone who looks in the mirror and then forgets what he looks like. He Praise the like, Lord. Yes. Thank you very much, Pastor Nike. Hallelujah. Pastor Shubala, please. Host, please, can you unmute sir, Pastor Shubala? Okay. Praise God. I just wanted Hallelujah. to double click on what. Uh... Pastor Bumi said, because that exactly is the truth of many of us today. Uh, I want to think that many of us, the way we conduct ourselves in church is the way we conduct ourselves at work. It's just, we're the same person, but in that environment, we feel we owe an accountability. I'm sure some of the tantrums we see people throw here, they don't do it in their jobs because they, they abide by the code of conduct of the job. Likewise, our children at home, they can do certain things in school. When their teacher says sit, they sit, right? Mm. So so it's, it's the permissiveness. Mm. The home environment is permissive, so you can do whatever you like. You don't feel you're under authority. That's who you are. They make you do the rules. So I think it, 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 it again shows infancy. But again, mm. the, the, whether people grow out of infancy into adulthood in the spiritual sphere is up to us. If the permissiveness is allowed, people will remain as they are. They will not have any impetus to change. But when we remove the permissiveness, then people will grow up and know that this exactly. is not accepted here. Yeah. Nobody's going to, to applaud me for peeing on myself here. Yeah. I need to get my act together. God bless and help all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, like we have all said, we have all learned uh, we have all concluded that the solutions out of infancy is feeding on the word regularly, 
yes, positively influenced by positively influenced by fellowshipping with mature Christians. I mean, come to church, you learn more, you grow more. You know, like Pastor Nika said, you, it's like they teach you everything, and when you now go back, see if they didn't teach you anything. No, no, it's not accepted. When you come to fellowship, you you learn to be more mature, learn to be doers of the word, and not hearers alone. Exactly what Pastor Nika has said. We must learn to be taught by others mature believers exactly and pastor like pastor Bruno also said and pastor Shubala alluded to the fact that it's a mindset it is a mindset in some certain instances you want to present as an adult you behave like one and in certain, in certain instances you want to behave like a child and you want to be treated as such so it's a mindset so the last note here is that infancy is not a virtue it must endeavor to grow if a child does not grow i'm sure the parents will be worried you be in one hospital or the other. You be one prayer house or the other. You know, the child does not meet the milestone it's supposed to meet at every point in time. A, 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 a parent is, I mean, you be worried. So, like I said, infancy is not a virtue at all. It must endeavor to grow or to outgrow its praise the Lord. So, um, we we'll just take one more from Sister Jade. She talked about hospitality. And what is hospitality? I don't think I was in class for this one. I, I think I was out of town, but I, 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 of course, I watched online. So, but I want to know what is hospitality, please. Being hospitable, <laughs> being that okay. Arena's hand was up. Oh, okay, Arena. I'm so sorry. I did not see your hand. My, my camera is limited. My, so so sorry, Arena. Being hospitable, it's that Daniel really. Yes, what is being hospitable? Yes, yes. Anybody's hand is up. I don't know. I can't see all the I can't see all the what is being hospitable, please. Let's talk. What is hospitality? Being hospitable, Pastor Daniel, Sister Daniel said, yes. How are you hospitable? Being friendly and welcoming and accommodating. Exactly. Thank you very much, Mr. Titi. Being benevolent, desire missions. Thank you. Being friendly, being welcoming. Yes, especially to strangers. Exactly. Because if you frown your face and you are not hospitable, nobody will come to you again. Nobody will even come to you at all. They'll say, ah, this person that is frowning face, that is doing that attitude. Ah, I don't like it. I don't think I want to be close to this person. I don't know. I don't think I want to know this person. You know, so being hospitable makes people to be endeared to us. So example people that I were hospitable in the Bible. We all know one quick example that came was Abraham when he showed um when he was hospitable to the three men that came to visit him, nothing that they were even angels, you know, and God and his angels came to see him. And also that woman, um, is it the Shunamai woman that was hospitable to is he Elijah now that built him a house a room, you know, put a table there, put a chair, put a bed, you know, and all that. People have been hospitable. Who else has been hospitable in the Bible? Being hosp uh, Pastor Sobala said, being hospitable gives us um, entry points to preach the gospel to sinners. Exactly. Exactly. Once you are hospitable, once you are nice, people will want to be in debt to you. They'll be in debt to you, and also they would, you know, they would, um, they want to listen to whatever you have to say. And even your life, like you said, our lives are living epistles. People read us, people look at us. You see, are a Christian and you behave like this and you do this and you do that. Of course, people will not be in debt to us, Christ. They tell you, that is your Christ, that is how your church is, that's how your religion is. Ah, then I don't want to be, you know. So Abigail was hospitable. That was the person I was even trying, I mean, going to talk about. Abigail was if Abigail was hospitable, if not, David would have killed a, a crazy husband, Nadab. I mean, it was another but now, but I can't even remember either of the two. Yes, David was Jesus, of course, is hospitable. Rahab, too. Yes, if not for Rahab, our whole family would have been wiped out when Digital Joshua was wiping out the, um, the, the when we were wiping out the whole of Jericho. So it's 9 45 now. We have, of course, if we, we, like I said, one eye is not enough for us to reveal the whole of what we did this first quarter, but we just chose a few examples and we chose to discuss. And I'm so happy that we have been doing good listening, like we tell our children. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we have been doing good listening, so we are able to contribute and even, you know, 
we recall and recollect all that we have been taught in church, all that we have been fed with over the past quarter in treasures from heaven. Thank you very much. And uh, so at this juncture, we have to stop now for us to resume at ten for the um, for the for the church papa service to start. So I'll just quickly pray now. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you for what you have taught us today. We thank you for what you are able to recollect and what you have brought to our mind. We pray that your word about King of Kings will bring joy into our hearts at every point in time. It will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path in the mighty name of Jesus. Peter, the word about we give understanding and we bring light unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word will be mixed with faith in our heart about to profit us at every point in time in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for the rest of the service of the God Almighty that everything will go on well and smoothly, seamlessly in the mighty name of Jesus. Even at this time, people will be brought closer to you. People will, be, people will know you more and more and you will draw to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We worship you. We give you praise. We give you honor. For in Jesus' almighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much.